we are gibber things better in more detail than ever before, and this telescope is going to be among its many abilities able to measure the chemistry of the atmosphere of exoplanets that pass in front of their host star. Astrophysicists just stumbled upon a series of staggering discoveries from the James Webb Space Telescope this year, and it has left them jabbering. The Telescope of Unreal Capabilities, James Webb Space Telescope, JWST for short, once again searches the cosmos high and low in a continued exploration of space. This time, however, they found some anomalies in the fabric of the universe that can't be explained by the science we have come up with on Earth yet. What were these anomalies? How did JWST make these discoveries in the first place? Join us as we explore the new possibilities of the nature of space as revealed by JWST and what these possibilities mean for Earth. Neil deGrasse Tyson has spoken extensively about the James Webb Space Telescope. The James Webb Space Telescope has been a subject of intense discussion and speculation since even before its completion. Understandably so, the telescope is our most powerful tool in the arsenal leading us to places that 100 years ago we would not have even dreamed of in our wildest imaginations. One of the people who has spoken extensively on the JWST is Neil deGrasse Tyson. The infamous scientist has not shied away from the subject of the telescope, enthusiastically drumming up debates and ideas around the subject. One such event was at the 25th Annual Isaac Asimov Memorial Debate where John Wise, a professor in the School of Physics and director of the Center for Relativistic Astrophysics, joined Neil deGrasse Tyson for a thrilling discussion. Tyson and Wise spoke about the JWST's impact on astrophysics, more specifically on our understanding of black holes and how they form. On the panel, Tyson asked a simple question to the panelists. Has the JWST changed astrophysics in any way? What ensued was an enthralling discussion amongst well-read people in the field, pitching in their thoughts on the subject. Moreover, Tyson has not made light of his enthusiasm towards the JWST. On July 12, 2022, Neil captured his reaction to some of the first images dropped from the JWST showing elation. Oh my gosh, the first image from the James Webb Space Telescope, and here it is, galaxies to the edge of time. Oh my gosh. He further went on to explain that the telescope can be used to observe the literal birth of galaxies through the power of infrared imaging. NASA astronomer Natalie Batalha added that the JWST can potentially bring back the remnants of the very first supernova that went off in the universe, making the whole affair all the more intriguing. By far the most interesting thing Tyson has emphasized in relation to the JWST is the fact that, unlike the Hubble Space Telescope, which orbited Earth a mere 360 miles away from the surface of our planet, the JWST is stationary. Not just that, the JWST is parked about a whopping million miles away from Earth in the opposite direction of the Sun, orbiting the Earth and the Sun together. This brings up the fact that the JWST is able to quite literally look into the past of the universe, bringing us snapshots of things that happened billions of years ago and allowing us to fill in the gaps in the storyline. When the JWST is fully expanded, its sun shield measures up to about 21 by 46 feet. This is also the JWST's largest feature designed to fold about 12 times to make it more compact. Engineering a machine as big as the JWST was quite a task, and the engineering that went behind making it fit within the Ariane 5 rocket as it made its way to L2, a Lagrange point, was outstanding. What is a Lagrange point? It is a point where the object would have been able to maintain a gravitationally stable orbit within the Sun-Earth system. Tyson detailed to Popular Mechanics how difficult it was to deploy the telescope, explaining how the engineers figured out a way to fold the telescope so that it could fit in the fairing of the rocket. Moreover, heavy shields had to be deployed just so the temperature of the JWST could drop to almost near absolute zero a million miles away from Earth, adapting to the temperature of space itself. However, there was another thought-provoking aspect about the JWST. Tyson elucidated that there was a possible gap in the space-time continuum observed through our telescope. This gap was the era and time when nothing on Earth could provide high-quality data. This stage happened early on in the universe when human innovation was in its infancy, taking little steps at a time. Why is this so? There is a simple answer to this question. When stars and galaxies are born, they emit radiation in the form of ultraviolet light. As these stars and galaxies travel through space, a place that is not static but instead has been expanding since the dawn of time, the light waves that were emitted end up stretching. 
This stretching results in longer wavelengths, and by the time the light reaches our planet, it is fully converted into infrared radiation. Tyson claimed that the images the JWST has been showing us, such as the galaxies that formed around 13 billion years ago, are a portal to the past. So, how do you even fathom the fact that we might be looking at pictures of objects that existed so far in the past? Tyson provides another excellent answer to that question using a simple analogy. If two people were in the same room and one person was a certain distance away from the other, the first person would not see the second person as they are now. Instead, they would see the second person as they were billions of a second ago. Mind-boggling, isn't it? He adds that because human beings can only live up to some decades, 10 if they are lucky, that kind of time simply is not enough to induce any significant or meaningful change in a person. What if, at an arm's length away, you made the two people stand 384,000 minutes away? Maybe once that person is on a star, change will be seen. For example, a person on a nearby star would appear 20 years into the past, and that person would not be able to see you for that period of time. The time it takes for light from most stars residing in our galaxy to reach us is short compared to how long they live, so worrying about whether the star whose light we see today is different from what it's doing right now is futile. Astrophysicists now use telescopes like the JWST to see stars that exploded thousands or millions of years ago, in a way observing the ghosts of stars that might not exist today. That begs the question, what ghosts has the JWST captured earlier this year that have stumped the scientists? Earlier this year, the JWST brought forth new images of the Orion Nebula, shedding light on a formerly well-researched yet hardly understood celestial object. These new images display the cloud of gas and dust responsible for star formation in more detail. The Orion Nebula, a celestial object located about 500 light-years away, is also known as Messier 42 or M42. It is located towards the constellation of Orion, making it the closest star-forming region to our solar system. According to the science communication website The Planet, the Orion Nebula is part of one of the most active regions in the sky known as the Orion Molecular Cloud Complex, sometimes referred to as the Orion Complex. It is a fascinating celestial body to grace our observations. Why is it fascinating? Researchers have claimed that the Orion complex is comprised of several molecular clouds. These include the Lambda Orionis clouds, the Orion cloud, and the Orion B cloud. The Orion cloud contains the Orion nebula, while the Orion B cloud houses the flame nebula. The JWST managed to capture the clearest view of the Orion nebula, which had never been seen before. According to the European Space Agency, this image revealed more than 3,000 stars some being observed for the very first time. Moreover, in 2016, we had the deepest and most comprehensive image showing the Orion Nebula, revealing some interesting details reported on Space.com. The image showed more planet mass objects and brown dwarfs. However, not every star seen in the Orion Nebula is considered successful. Many brown dwarfs have been found courtesy of the Hubble Space Telescope. Why are brown dwarfs called failures? The issue is their size. More specifically, their size is so small that they cannot sustain the nuclear fusion that happens at the core of stars. According to NASA, brown dwarfs are not big enough to be called stars, but they are not small enough to be considered planets either. They are awkwardly stuck somewhere in between, being 13 to 80 times the approximate mass of Jupiter. Back to the Orion Nebula, it has been studied extensively because it is visible to the naked eye when the skies are clear. According to Sky, the Orion Nebula has a visual magnitude of 4.0, which is almost visible to the unaided eye. Located around 1,500 light-years away, the nebula sits in the constellation of Orion. However, earlier observations still did not paint a clear picture of what was inside this nebula, which has been described as enormous and complex. With the James Webb Space Telescope on the front lines, we might be able to paint a more elaborate picture of the Orion Nebula. Over the past few years, the JWST has collected data that has elucidated the complexities of this nebula. On January 23, 2024, the Space Telescope Science Institute released a new set of data and images from the James Webb Space Telescope that showed the Orion Nebula in its entirety. The JWST captured the Orion Nebula using its near-infrared camera NIRCAM, one of the main four science instruments used on the JWST. 
This camera allows the telescope to observe distant objects up to 10 times fainter than what we have seen with other telescopes. NASA says this is due to the wavelength range NIR cam covers, from 0.6 to 5 microns, which includes the entire visible spectrum as well as some infrared wavelength bands. One of the biggest discoveries from the JWST's observations was the chemical complexity of the Orion Nebula. Emiliano Merlin, co-author of the paper presenting the findings and a PhD student at the University of Cambridge's Institute of Astronomy in the UK, stated that it is one of the few places where we see complex organic molecules such as acetylene and benzene mixed with molecules that contain nitrogen and sulfur. This unexpected mix of chemistry is something researchers are trying to understand. While these images are mesmerizing, they are monochromatic and are processed to show colors. The monochromatic images are converted into red, green, and blue in post-processing, yielding a false color image. However, the colors used represent real features in the nebula, such as star formation regions or dust clouds, allowing the colors to be considered an accurate representation of the gases being emitted from the celestial bodies. According to the Smithsonian, the Orion Nebula images revealed new stars that were not previously visible, as well as other parts of the Orion complex that had not been seen before. One notable image the JWST delivered was that of new stars in the Orion Nebula that were not visible before, due to the massive amounts of dust surrounding them. The JWST was able to see through this dust using infrared radiation. Why infrared? As explained before, the radiation emitted from the stars at their birth is ultraviolet, but due to the expansion of the universe, this radiation is stretched to become infrared. However, the JWST was still not done with its revelations. Before the new images of the Orion Nebula, NASA released some stunning photos of another object, the Tarantula Nebula. According to CNN, the Tarantula Nebula is 161,000 light-years away, located within the Dorado constellation, making it one of the largest star-forming regions near the Milky Way. For context, the Milky Way is about 100,000 light-years away from our Sun, so the distance of the Tarantula Nebula is impressive. The data obtained from the Tarantula Nebula using the JWST has been extremely useful. It was used to observe the massive young stars formed in the heart of the nebula, a feat only possible due to its supercharged radiation that illuminates and gives the appearance of silk spun around it. The JWST also showed several other galaxies that formed about 13 billion years ago. These galaxies were not observed using previous technologies and have taken the JWST's capabilities to the next level, delving into the unknown and painting a clearer picture of what lies ahead. Another object of interest is the Eridanus II galaxy. This galaxy was barely visible before, but the new image provided by the JWST shows how bright this galaxy can be. The galaxy is a small, ultra-diffuse one located about 1.3 million light-years away, which NASA states is the second ultra-diffuse galaxy known. The telescope also captured several other objects, such as a field of young galaxies in the LEO the first group of galaxies, which are 35 million light-years away, a breathtaking view of the Sun's turbulent surface and the Whirlpool Galaxy. This was courtesy of the JWST's infrared capabilities, which have given us images of the Whirlpool Galaxy that are 20 times better than those captured by the Hubble Telescope. While the Tarantula Nebula and the Orion Nebula have shown us impressive details never seen before, the JWST has more surprises hidden in its bag of tricks. On June 22nd, the James Webb Space Telescope sent back to Earth another set of impressive images. These images show the process of star formation in a region within the Milky Way galaxy using NIR cam. The JWST provided images showing young stars still enveloped in the gas and dust they were born in, called protoplanetary disks. These disks are made of gas and dust surrounding young stars, making it impossible for other telescopes to see what is inside. With the JWST, however, the disks can be seen in infrared light, revealing some secrets of the cosmos. The JWST also observed the process of star formation in the chameleon cloud complex, which is 450 light years away. It showed the formation of L1527, a protostar currently in its early stages of forming into a star. The JWST also observed the formation of the Taurus molecular cloud, located about 450 light-years away from Earth. It captured images of the first stages of star formation, with some stars being about 100,000 years old, 
while others are a bit older at 1 million years old. The JWST showed the process of star formation, the various stages it goes through, and how the stars that form in the region look after they are fully formed. This is only the tip of the iceberg of what the JWST has shown us so far, and there is more to come. The telescope has the ability to observe the birth of stars, the formation of planetary systems, and the death of stars, providing us with an unprecedented look into the universe.